Hello, everybody. This is James Chai, uh, and I am broadcasting today. It's October 22nd, 2019, episode number 28. Uh, October 22nd, episode two, uh, number 28, and I'm just going to pull up my little thing. I apologize. I'm broadcasting from my little uh, computer here again because the reception is not that great, but, you know, what the heck, I'm, I'm going to try to deal with it. I'm still having trouble with my uh, cell phone. I might have to reset my modem, which I thought I did the other day, but I didn't. So, everybody, I apologize. Um, today's going to be more of a recap than anything else. I think I'm going to go over some stuff that I used to uh, talk about the uh, past couple of days. Nothing really too major, and then just a, a, a shift in uh, and a shift in what I'm going to be doing um, as I move forward, trying to flesh out this vlog, trying to flesh out uh, what I'm doing and my uh, my drive and my desire to educate um, a different way of thinking, a different way of working with dogs. And this is something that I've been trying to do uh, for the last few years. And um, I had a great um, conversation today. Actually, I apologize that I'm just kind of trying to see where I'm at and everything like that. Um, uh, yeah, so I had a, a great conversation today with a, um, uh, a person out uh, back in New York in regards to um, what I've been doing. And uh, so far, I'm not really sure what's going to go on. Who knows what's going to go on? It's all this stuff. Um, uh, and, and, oh, yeah, if anyone has comments, feel free to ask comments at any time because I will be seeing my phone to see if I have it. So I'm going to try to set it up here so I can see comments and all that. Um, yeah, so I have somebody who's who uh, um, back east um, in Washington D.C. Uh, who um, uh, got on Skype with me, and we had a discussion this afternoon for for a good hour, and talked about what I did for uh, the dogs and uh, what they felt, uh, how I did, uh, and um, really happy to say that he's going to help me kind of start crafting myself on towards a more uh, social media type of experience. So I'm going to try to figure that out. Uh, one of the things I will be doing is I'm, I'm going to be reducing the number of broadcasts that I do. So instead of seven days a week, which is what I've been doing for the last month pretty well, I'm going to go down to probably three times, maybe four times a week. And I'm going to try to set up a schedule for those days that I'll be broadcasting. And I'll go from there. I'm not sure what days. I, you know, I might just do the traditional Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday uh, type of um, broadcast, but I'm going to reduce it down, and I'm going to try to be more focused uh, in, into doing my vlogs. Uh, just the conversation that he he gave me today, uh, what he told me, what his opinion was, and, and things were uh, could potentially lead to, makes sense. And I want to uh, for sure formalize what I'm doing, just so I have a better understanding of you know, hey Mary, um, just so this way I have a, a better understanding of what I am doing and how am I going to extend out the stuff uh what i'm trying to teach and and he you know not just this this person here but other people have said the same thing as you know the concepts that i'm talking about uh, uh, are somewhat a little bit difficult to understand and uh, what do they lead to what do they mean how do i prove it and it's been a, a bit of a struggle for me to try to humanize create human analogies of the stuff that i do because i'm seeing everything that the dog is doing at the dog's processing speed uh, I'm watching the nuanced behaviors and all that stuff, so I'm not really thinking consciously, so to speak, of what I see when the dogs are doing. I'm just observing, right? I'm a witness to it, and I'm using my intuition, and this is the same thing that y you all have is intuition. You, ha you have intuition inside of you. you. You have your gut instinct. You know when someone might not be telling you the truth, and you know when somebody might need some help. And it's the same intuition that uh, I use with the dogs that I work with other animals. Um, you know, I've worked with alpacas and cats. Yeah, cats as well. Um, so all these things work. It, it's just uh, understanding the, the template of behavior that the animal uh, exhibits and then starting to do comparatives and, uh, you know, why is this behavior done and why is that behavior? Everything that we do in our life is deliberate. Every action... <clears throat> So every action that we do is, is deliberate, even if it's premeditated. As I said, human beings, we're premeditated. Um, but th there's a reason. Every time a dog does something, they're doing it as a consequence of something else that happened before them. If nothing happens, they don't do anything. They're only uh, uh, moving or reacting when it is 
a result of something happening. So um, um, try to figure this out, trying to explain it all, it's not that easy. Uh, because again, the, the way I see things is so, um, so, so complex, it's just trying to break it apart. So anyhow, long story short is I'm gonna move towards again to a reduced broadcast schedule <laughs> instead of seven days. Like I say, it takes me four to six hours to do one. And then I tend to, um, you know, you know, if you look some of the earlier broadcasts and I have the descriptions in them, um, I think the third or fourth broadcast going on, the details is on and on. And uh, uh, what this uh, this this uh, person said to me was that there's just so many different topics on there that even on their own they could be an entire um, an entire program uh, on on its own. And why don't I just kind of make it easier that way, make it marketable? And start moving uh, people towards my YouTube channel and try to figure out how social media he's uh, he has a, a strong social media um, uh, uh, career going on and um, you know he's out in Washington DC so uh, just a really nice guy it's just a super duper nice guy and uh, just uh, just so impressed when people reach out it's always an American as well to be honest with you you know it's 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 kind of interesting um, but it, it's always an American that reaches out to me and says, hey, James, you know what you're doing is, is pretty cool, and I'd love to uh, give you some advice and help you for free. Uh, you know, you've helped me with my dog. I, I really enjoy what you've done. I want to kind of see if we can get your story out more to people. Uh, Canadians, we're just like, mm, no, we, I don't know if we're allowed to be so uh, confident. Right? And I was like, no, oh, all right. Um, so it was kind of neat. It was, it was kind of cool, and um, you know, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit scary for me because I'm, I'm thinking of, well, I want to get my message out, but I don't know how to do it, and I'm trying to something, uh, trying to do something that's totally new to me, and it's going to be kind of a, of a big, of a, a bit of a, um, a huge learning curve for me to do. So to try, try to find out, you know, what Twitter means and what Instagram means, and I mean, all these other things, and I'm, I want to get it out. I've been working so hard on advocacy for the last few years. I have my petition uh, that criminalizes uh, to, to request the federal government of Canada to criminalize dog and cat meat, which is great because uh, the liberals won uh, the election last night. And so uh, my member of parliament, um, uh, Ken Hardy, uh, will be presenting the petition to the House of Commons this December is what he had said. And that's 105,000 signatures on that petition. So uh, it's something that I'm, I'm proud of being a part of. The advocacy is there, but when it comes to helping dogs, I got to get out there. I got to reach out a little bit more. And um, I think people are getting, you know, overwhelmed by so many vlogs, and it's hard for them. I've had people who say, you know, I I can't watch them all. I want to watch them all. They send me messages. I want to watch them all, but I can't. So I'm going to kind of binge them every once in a while. And that also says to me, obviously, the message is not getting out there what I'm talking about because it's just it's too much. So I'm going to reduce that, like I said, and um, you know, three to four times a week. And then I'm going to, going to stay more focused on a topic. Uh, I think Cassian had said that before on my YouTube channel. She, uh, he, she had said it was just it's just be more focused and, and shorter, bite-sized pieces. Uh, so I'm going to do that. You know, I know how dogs process time. I know what tail behavior means right to the subconscious root level of it. Uh, I'm working with extremely dangerous dogs, extremely skittish dogs, and every dog that's mild upward. And uh, it's hard to, for me to try to convey all this because I have so much to give and to share for, for free that to me, I'm just like, I might as well just tell everything, but I also need to make it make sense and, and start to package things differently. Uh, I still haven't put out my Cody slash Alex uh, video, the Jindo from Save uh, Korean Dogs, uh, Nami Kim. Um, that one, I haven't put that out. I've been meaning to, I just kind of keep falling back on time. And I haven't finished doing my, my vlog from yesterday, doing the key points, kind of fell asleep after I uh, hung out with my doggies. So I'm going to do that. But um, So today I'm just going to kind of recap some of the things I talk, uh, talked about. And, um, and then I'm going to kind of keep this, I'm hoping to keep this under an hour and then, um, and then, um, I'll, yeah, I'll transition forward into probably the next broadcast will be Wednesday is what I'll do. I just got to catch up on the rest of my, um, regular personal life.
Okay, so uh, today is, is going to be a recap, and um, you know, yesterday I talked about when you with your dog, regardless what kind of training you've gone through, whoever you've gone to for training, regardless if it's me or or anybody else, it's always to make sure. And, and as I said this yesterday, is always if you have an issue, work on your basics, work on your, work on your foundation, go back to square one. Don't try to push your dog to a failure position where you're expecting them to do stuff that they can't themselves uh, process or, or uh, consciously proceed with because they're still stuck in their dysfunction, right? Everything I'm talking about is dysfunction, aside from the, you know, basic training side. But again, if your dog has a dysfunction, trauma, PTSD, emotional uh, disturbance, right? They're upset. Our progress is going to be pretty awesome, but you have to remember that after our session, after any session, any training session with anybody, you got to reset with your dog. You got to go back to square one. With my dysfunction aspects of training, it's about having your dog reset themselves by us helping. They're going to reset. They're going to calm down a little bit from the 100% that they're at. They'll calm down to 99%. That's that's pretty good because typically if they were at 100%, they would stay at 100%. So we're going to calm them down to 99%, and then 98%, then 97%. To us, it doesn't seem like a lot. It's only 1%. But to our dog, it is a phenomenal shift because then they start anticipating and understanding that we're helping our dog understand that they have a fear, they have an issue, there's something going on. But, hey, we're helping them. All right, what's, what's, uh, nothing is better than being able to contact somebody when you have a bad day and say, hey, can you help me, right? So uh, just remember, reset your dog. Don't try to push him to fail. Your dog has been dysfunctional for their entire life. It's not as if they're just like, oh, today I'm dysfunctional and, and tomorrow I'm going to be totally cool. They've been dysfunctional the whole entire time, right up to the point of getting you. And if you've, if you've adopted a dog from a rescue or from a shelter or, you know, off one of the online things because there's a behavioral issue, you got to remember that your dog, before you got them, has existed in that type of behavior beforehand. So we want to help them move forward and we want to help guide them to a point where they understand what's going on, that they understand that, uh, that we know why they're being reactive and that we know why they're having this kind of, like anxiety and we want them to know that we're taking care of them really that's it we're addressing the issues the the, the reasons why the dogs are our, our dog is reacting is because they're afraid that that is, is essentially it they're afraid for their own personal safety they're afraid for our safety that's why they're going to react if you see a dog just sitting outside of front of a house starts barking at somebody coming into the yard it's because the dog is saying, stay away. This is our property. Don't come in. I'm, a, I'm right. The barking, not being aggressive. They're saying, don't come in because you're, you're uh, the only reason I'm getting upset with you. I'm only reason I'm barking is because you're coming into my property and you're invading something that are making me uncomfortable. I don't trust you. Right? I'm afraid of you. You have the other dogs that are just like, you know, people will say, oh, you know, the burglar came in and my dog just laid there and just went and didn't do anything. It's because the dog felt comfortable in where he was and, and, and the dog didn't feel that the other person, the intruder, was a threat. And I talk about the fact that, you know, you see the videos where people pretend that they're screaming and crying and, and being attacked and see what their dog is going to do. And the dog just kind of looks, looks at you like, oh, whatever. But that correlates to how we ourselves have the, the true the sincerity in our actions when something does happen. So it's kind of a, kind of a tough thing there. Um, if we're not paying attention to to what's going on okay um right so yeah so all else fails go back to square one where i said this yesterday and i, and I said today um you know because a lot of times people push our dogs and then they start failing and then we're like well the, our dog what's wrong with our dog oh, like a child square one go back to the basic training it, you know teach a dog to roll over and pretend they're play dead it takes, again, a whole bunch of steps for that to happen. You know, they got to sit, they got to lay flat or lay down, whatever the command you use. They got to they gotta roll on their side. You get them to roll up with their legs up and all that. You're using the command, passive training or in motion training.
whatever you're using or, or, or action training, then yeah, absolutely. But it all takes steps. And if you don't keep those steps going for that basic type of fun looking cute trick, your dog will just forget about all these things. Same thing like us, right? You know, we forget what we're doing all day long. We don't know what we did, you know, at 10.35 p.m. Uh, or, I mean, a.m. because we weren't, we're not paying attention because it wasn't important to us, we, right? It's just in a minute in our life um, with our dogs. Everything that they're doing has to have a relevance, right? That has to have some context in what our dogs are doing. And it's so important because if we're not keeping conscious of what our dogs are doing, if we're not paying attention to what our dogs are doing, if we're not keeping an eye on what our dog is doing, and again, this is all dysfunctional dogs, right? All dogs that are reactive or skittish, if we're not paying attention to what they're doing, we don't know, then we lose understanding and perception of, their, of our dog's personality, of our dog's behaviors. Right? Every time you take out, uh, somebody takes out a dog that's reactive, that they know is gonna bite another dog, you as the human are like, okay, well, I'm not taking the dog out. Uh, and if I do take him out when there's other people around, I have to watch my dog. And you see these people who are constantly holding onto the leash and kind of spaghettiing it and they're, paying, and they're watching their dog as they're talking to the person and they're just kind of worried and scared as they see the person approaching them. You've seen this all the time, right? People are like that. There's, like I said, upwards of 40% is what I estimate are, are dogs that have dysfunctions of some degree. And so they're always worried, they're always worried about it. You see these people always watching, watching, and then if something happens, they pull their dog back right away or they, they do something to stop their dog's behavior because they're already they already know their dog's behavior ahead of time. They've already been paying attention. So it's the same thing when it happens to people who have just normal types of dysfunctional dogs, whatever it is, okay? Uh, people are going to uh, need to pay attention and, and not to push our dogs further than where they're at. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of go on, on another thing here. I'm gonna go to the next one here, something else. About petting your dog's stitches and wounds. Um, it hasn't happened, you know, I haven't had to take a, any of my dogs to, to the vet in, in, in a while. Um, knock on wood, knock, knock, knock. But I, I see these videos and these the things on Facebook all the time just drives me nuts is where you'll see a dog that has had surgery and stitches. And I've talked about this before, right? They'll have stitches all over, like, like you know, all, say, for example, all on the leg or whatever. And the stitches are there and the dog has just, you know, it just got out of surgery and they're still dozy and then they, and, 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 you know, or sleepy, I mean. And the vet will literally go, yeah, you know, the dog, your dog, yeah, you see the wound. And they'll start moving the wound around. They'll start moving the stitches around and start, like, manhandling the stitches. I'm like, my dog just got a relatively, you know, significant surgery and, and you're touching – the wounds where they, I mean, we wouldn't do that to another human being unless the, unless the area was totally, you know, uh, uh, desensitized with uh, topical uh, anesthesia or painkiller, I mean, uh, right? Or if they're still drugged under, you're not going to be, you're right. And then I'll, I'll bring them, and I've had this where I brought my dog back after they had some stitches or whatever it is, an injury, I'll bring them back to the vet. And then the vet, and this is not just one, but it's, it's like almost every vet I've ever seen. That's why I see it on the videos and I'm like, holy cow. And I'll see them actually, the vet, and my dog will come back conscious, right? Because they're, they're not, you know, even if they're getting stitches taken out, they're conscious. And then the vet will be like, yeah, you know, the wound looks pretty good. And that's how it's like kind of pulling it apart to make sure that it's not, I'm like, what? And then, and then, okay, I can understand you want to kind of see if it's, but you can tell it's clean and there's no, no issues on it. There's no contamination on it. And, and then they start like, pulling like patting it they're like strike patting and then like you say they start doing it again and i'm like oh my gosh uh, if i ha you know like for an example when i uh, when i was young in my 20s and i was working out i was pretty strong i was working as a bar porter and at a, at a nightclub down in um in victoria where i grew up and one time we were moving 170 pound kegs i think it's 170 pound kegs of beer around the huge kegs it would take two to three of us to pick it up and i remember one time we all went one two three trying to get up on the third uh we were stacking them three high so we were uh, maybe it's 140 pounds uh you beer drinkers will know and um so it had to take three of us so you know all three of us big guys we, we uh, much bigger than i used to be um uh, we're all picking it up and we get it up to the third 
thing and we're trying to push it in. And I said, okay, push it in. And the guy on the other side thought he meant to push towards me. I don't know why. So he pushed towards me and then the cake fell off. My finger got caught into a drain hole, not to be graphic, but uh, it, it, it almost broke my finger right off. And there were some quite uh, severe stitches that had to be done. And, you know, went to the hospital and they did that. And like I bear the scars to this day, obviously. And um, it hurt like crazy, obviously. And, and it throbbed and it just it was like, it hurt so much. And I can't handle the pain. It hurt so much. And I remember, you know, five, six months later, and it was still tender. And I was closing the drawer in my bedroom because I was living at home. I was closing the drawer at my bedroom. And I accidentally hit my the wound, which is right here. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see it right here. Uh, whoops, right, right here is the wound. Oh, yeah, you probably can't see it. Um, and so I remember hitting the dresser drawer of it, and I screamed in intense pain because it hurt. Like it was so raw feeling. Still, like five, six months later, and my parents were like, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" I'm like nothing and i'm like you know because I, I was like 21 i was like rah, 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 and swearing my head off and everything like that and, and and i was so angry i was hitting my dresser for doing that and the dress is like an inanimate object but it hurt that for that you know five six months anyone who's had surgery is going to say the same thing even even though this is like nothing compared to what some people have had to go through for surgery you know huge huge uh surgeries the wound's going to hurt it's going to be the same thing for your dog the reason why our dog doesn't express pain and discomfort is through the aspect of how they are able to process pain through a redundant format. It, it, it's a certain scale and a threshold of it and all that stuff, but um, they're still feeling it. So, you know, and I've said this to the vets before, because uh, it just pisses me off actually, it really does when they start manhandling the wound and I, and, right, and they're like manhandling the wound, I'm just like, you know, you're hurting my dog. You know that, right? And they're like, oh, no, your dog. But the dog's okay. They don't feel it. Yeah, the dog feels it. Look at his face. Look at his body. Look at how stiff he is. Look how he's kind of half quickly blinking and, and, and not moving his head. It's hurting him. Oh, no, he's just, he, he's, I'm like, stop doing that. And then and I'll say, can you just stop pulling him? And then it'll go, oh, no, he's okay. I'll just have to check the wound. I'm like, he just did it. Because they're trying to prove to me that the dog, my dog is not in pain when they're doing this. So it's the same thing when somebody goes, I want to pet your dog, who's a dog trainer, behaviors, or a dog walker. And they're like, I want to pet your dog. And then they go, oh, no, don't pet my dog. My dog's reactive. And they, and they say, oh, no, uh, dogs love me. And they keep trying to pet your dog. And the dog's like, oh, stop it. Because they want to prove that your dog loves them. So the, the vet's going like this again. I'm like, just stop doing that. So what I've learned to do finally uh, is I leave a leash on my dog, right? I always leave a leash on them when I'm in the in the vet anyhow, because you're supposed to, you should, right? And I don't care if your dog's three pounds. It just, you got to be respectful for the other dogs and cats that are there. And um, so now I leave the leash on, and when I go to the vet and they're doing that, and I will kind of keep the leash kind of hidden behind, beside me. And because my dogs are big, right, they're Great Danes, so I'll kind of keep the leash behind them. They start doing stuff like that to one of them, I, don't know, I just ended up kind of pulling the leash forward while the vet doesn't see it. I'm like, oh, he doesn't like it, right? And, I, and, and the funny thing is, when I do that, my dog immediately starts moving forward because he's like, okay, good, the pain's over. But I see, I see them flinching and flinching and like, Arr. and it's like, oh, my gosh, right? I'll get into that article. Maybe when I do my vlog next, I'll talk about how dogs process pain. I mean, I talk, it's a bit complicated, uh, but it just makes logic and everything like that. But it just, next time you go to your vet, next time someone tells you your dog doesn't feel pain, you know, it's crazy. I mean, you, you see these, um, you, you see these uh, issues of um, ch uh, dog abuse. Right, and the videos uh, where someone's like, ah, grab the dog and throw the dog on the ground and all that stuff, and then the vet says, yeah, well, you know, the dog's okay. I mean, a little bit of, but right. the dog's not okay. I, I saw a post a few years back where somebody was charged with abuse for the dog. They were they attempted to charge. I don't know what they did get charged because of the post, but it was the thing where someone picked up their dog and threw the dog onto the ground. I think it was a pit bull. And I don't know why the guy did it because the post was so long ago yeah but threw the dog on the ground and then the animal cruelty animal uh animal control got involved because of the complaint 
And then there's actually, a, it was in the newspaper too, because it linked through to the newspaper. And the article said that the vet said, well, there's no long lasting effects to our, to the dog. And it doesn't seem like the dog has any issues because he wasn't reacting to it and all that stuff. And the thing is like, oh my gosh, you know, what? I've, I, me, I've fallen out of my bed onto the floor before and it hurts like freaking crazy. And that's like two and a half feet off the ground. Just we, we got to kind of have more consciousness of our dogs. Uh, that's all I'm saying is just, um, but I just try not to see the stitches and, and, and the, the vets. It's like, it's okay. Your dog's not upset about it. Yeah, my dog is just tolerating the pain. Uh, why would you keep contributing to it? Um, so there's that. And then uh, actually that kind of segues into something back up onto it is, is going to be shock collar training. Um, You know, I, I can completely understand people who, who need to use a shock collar on their dog um, to a point that if you've been told to do so by a, a, a colleague, right, one of my colleagues or whatever, um, it's such a crude method of trying to train any, anything, any person, any, any animal. Uh, it's a brute force application, and more than anything else, it being brute force, it completely punches your dog in the face out of the blue. They know, you know, like I said, I, I had a, I tried a prong collar on once because I mean I'm not going to go say oh prong collars don't hurt or they do hurt unless I've done it myself, right? So and it hurts just putting it on like it, it, it pokes in and these are dulled edges, and yes, the dog has thicker skin and they have fur etc. But it still hurts, especially if you if a dog is lunging and they're even a 40 pound dog and they're lunging, they're putting 100, 120 pounds of pressure onto their neck with that, that prong collar. And the shock collar, my gosh, the shock collar has got to be one of the most cruelest things around. Um, it, 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 it's just brutal because you're basically zapping your dog for what they feel is no reason, no idea. And I talked about this the other day, it's like having your dog stung like a bee, right? That, that dog, um, a dozer uh, from my uh, reactive group, right? Dozer got stung repeatedly every time he went outside. For some reason, you know, bees thought he was, you know, delicious. So they would, he got stung and got stung and eventually he stopped going outside and he would refuse to go outside. And I said, the analogy to that is the shock collar. And, you know, I might turn off some people in regards to my comments about that, but realistically, the shock collar is uh, truly an archaic device. It's truly an unskilled professional's tool. It is a, a brute force application, and it causes the dog to have psychological issues. It causes your dog to not understand or have an ability to equate logically this and this other than the fact that it just happened out of the blue like being stung like a bee and i say the same thing in previous vlogs if you're walking down the street right sorry uh if you're walking down the street and someone just comes out and punches you out of the alley without you even realizing it happened you know how much i mean I, it's like walking in the dark and someone punching you in the head and then you're turning around to see where they are and then they punch you in the head in the other way. It is a, it's an oppression. It's a force oppression and it's not cool. You don't try to help someone you love by hurting them in such a random format in an extreme format. I mean, a lot of times people turn the, you know, they'll, they'll turn the, the, the thing up from like one, two or three up to nine or 10 because the dog's more reactive. And I talk about that guy, Richard Chan, out in, um, in Richmond, who shot collars his dogs. And it's like, people are paying this guy $3,000 for a month to shot collar train their own dog. And people go, oh, wow, you know, that's great. Shot collar the dog. Shot collar, I use a shot collar on My trainer told me to use a shot collar. My, dog, my trainer told me to use a prong collar. And I just want to i'd love to see these things banned to be honest with you and um you know i know there's a 
organized uh, group or whatever called sh Band Shock Colors Canada. I mean, these guys are so pathetic. It's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, they've been trying this for, I think, two, three, four years, and they have no organization whatsoever. I offered to help them. They just ignored my email. It's like, wow. Okay. Because I have 105,000 signatories on my petition, and their petition has pretty well a couple of thousand, and they just totally ignored it. It's like, so you don't really care about banning shot callers, do you? You, you? you don't care about the dog. You just care about your own little focus on it. And it's like, if you don't, anyways, I mean, anyhow. I mean, they have the David Suzuki as a signatory on, on the petition that he talked about. And, you know, a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about uh, David Suzuki. Um, yeah, Google David Suzuki is the stuff that's been said about him that make your stomach turn, um, which I was really surprised. I thought he was pretty cool and he used to be on CBC, the nature of things and now the stuff that he's like an old pervert. And um, it's really kind of gross actually, because I looked up to the guy and now I'm like destroyed. And then they have them on shot color, banned shot colors, Canada. I'm like, wow, you guys don't do your, you don't, you don't even care. You're just looking at optics and making yourselves look good and all that. It's really sad. It is, it's the sacrifice of our dog's uh, success, longevity in life for the selfishness of the humans. You know, I have people who I personally don't like because they've trolled me. Uh, people I don't like as friends or whatever. If I have people I don't like, I just don't talk to them anymore. And we both get the, you know, or they don't talk to me anymore and that's it. But people who, who trolled me and all stuff. You know, I had somebody, I offered them cat food, um, I offered cat food and then they contacted me and cat and now they're like, right. And I knew that they they trolled me and they were with a certain group and all stuff. And they contacted me. Yeah, you can have cat food. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to hold your, your cat's happiness uh, against your cat because of you. And I've always said to people, I'll train the devil's dog if that was the case. In which the devil's dog probably needs the most love and care anyways you know anyway i'm just being stupid here but um yeah so uh, the shock collar is just a brutal device if you have a regular collar on a regular fabric collar a leash collar that works just as good if the collar is on firmly go to a pet store say to them i got a collar how is it supposed to be properly, uh, 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 you know, secured to our to my dog? And they'll tell you. Make sure it's snug to the throat, where, like on a Great Dane, where you can put two fingers in between. A smaller dog is going to be one finger, right, and snugger as the dog is smaller, right? You see a lot of people with the collars that are too loose, right? You know, the collars like you know, the dog's neck is here, and then the collars like this, and and they're like, oh well, you know my dog's fine with it on. He's like, no, you want to translate what you're saying to your dog as quickly as possible. So you need a snug collar. And that eliminates the usage of a shock need for a shock collar or a prong collar. That's why I've always used a regular fabric collar with every single dog I've worked with. Uh, the most dangerous dog, regular collar. The most, like I said, most extremely dangerous Great Dane in North America. I use a regular collar on him. Nero, same thing when he attacked, uh, um, his foster's uh, adult child in Alabama before I adopted him, dragged, dragged them onto the couch. And I just, he got here, you know, extremely male reactive, intact, 10 years, four months old when I got, when I adopted Nero, intact. So you get all these people who also say, you know, neuter the dog and all that stuff. If you're paying attention to your dog and giving a, a, a right type of love and discipline, right? Firmness and like, a, like you would with your child or you would with your loved one, right? Your dog's gonna listen. I mean, I, Nero's 10 years old. Uh, I already got him as an old dog. Uh, this testosterone, he still has that little bit of semen licking out, li licking out, leaking out all the time and all that. Like he's always licking himself, like stop licking yourself, right? And I'm like, oh shoot, yeah, because he's still intact. And he's got that uh, behavior and other dogs don't like him or they like him for whatever reason. And I mean, uh, same aspect of controlling, right? We just deal with it. And I just had Nero on a regular collar. Um, Minky's on a regular collar. Uh, I sometimes have to use a slip if I think he's going to be somewhat freaky out, but I always try to keep him on a regular collar because it's not hurting him. 
Um, you know, there's times where I was like, oh, I wish I could, you know, I would use a shock collar because he's driving me nuts because he's like trying to bug the other dogs or barking, other dogs barking, whatever. But it's like, uh, just talk to them and tell them to stop. Same thing with a shock collar is replace that with a regular collar. You know, I have that uh, one blog, a vlog about not letting your dog pull you on leash. It's called the psychology of buying the proper leash. If your collar is snug on your dog, when you do a correction, they feel it right away. If there's slack on it, it takes time for the leash to pick up the slack and then the collar has to finally tighten up. And because the collar will, if you're pulling on the leash, the collar is only going to pull if it's too loose. It's only going to pull on 50% of your dog's neck. Well, 60%, right? Because of the, the angle, right? So it's only going to pull out like 60% on your dog's neck. But a, a snug collar, because it's firmer, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull in more of it because it, then you're up to about 80% because it's already going to take up all that tension off. Your dog feels the reaction right away, and you don't have to use as much force to control your dog because your dog feels more of the solid command of it than they would otherwise using a, a looser collar. Uh, how do you feel about using a harness? Um, a harness is great. Absolutely, they're totally cool. Um, you know, some dogs can pull out of it. I've I've heard of. I haven't seen because I did, I don't use it. Actually, no. Yeah, harnesses. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah. I've seen. I've had my own Great Dane. One of my the Danes I had here, um, um, uh, William, pull out of it. He actually pulled out of a harness because um, he's like this. You know, some Danes are really thin body, like a greyhound, so they just pull right out of it. They pull their legs out. You're like, what the heck? And then, then they start running around. Ha ha! Can't catch me! Can't catch me! And you're like, Arr. um. So the harness is totally cool as well. There's nothing wrong with using it. Um, you know, it's certainly better than a than a shock collar and everything. So just kind of stick with trying to. This the thing is the prong collar and the shock collar are these devices that are used to inflict pain and in, in, in correction, right? I mean, look at the old movies. From, you know, era movies from the 1700s, right? You know, people were wearing these huge like, Iron Maiden kind of things, right, back then. Um, yeah, they're making better harnesses these days, yeah. Yeah, I, I have an idea for a harness that I came up with, and it's worked perfect. It was a prototype, prototype, uh, what I call the triple hug harness. Um, but, you know, again, just getting back to the thing is using the shock collar, using the, the prong collar, it is a brute force device at the end of the day. And it's like escalating, a, 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 a escalating a, an environment beyond the necessary force that's needed. Just, that's all I can say. I mean, I don't want to come down too hard on, the, on that because I know there's a lot of people who like shock colors are great and, and prong colors are great and all that stuff, but you know, realistically. The one thing you can do if you do have a prong collar and you don't really want to use it, but you want to protect your dog in case he gets into a fight or other dogs attack him, I mean, usually that's the case is, uh, which is kind of cool because I saw this in a, in a couple polls uh, before on Facebook, is where people will take the prong collar because if their dog gets attacked, right, their dog is like a really passive dog or there's just somehow other dogs don't like your dog, etc. So what they've done is they've taken the prong collar, turned it inside out and put it outside so that the prongs stick out of the dog's neck and it prevents other dogs from attacking because once the other dog attacks, right, it's like, oh, my gosh, I was going to kill you, but now my teeth are bleeding. And it's not really like um, saying, well, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's really that part of you don't want your dog to be injured, and, and if it's going to protect your dog's neck. Same with a coyote. If there's a coyote or something along those lines, that's the same, uh, same part because um, they're going to go for key points. They're going to go for the legs. They're going to go for the – the hind flank, they're going to go for the neck as well, right? Um, so just, anyways, that, that's my little bit of a thing in regards to that. Uh, um, and I'll eventually get into more focus on the vlogs as, uh, as this gentleman here in uh, Washington, uh, D.C. starts to help me formulate where I'm going with all this stuff. Um, and if you guys have any questions, Sammy, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free. Um, you know, yesterday I talked about uh, walking on bridges 
and, and the way it is, it's relational to the dog's field of vision, uh, relational to the dog's logical processing, relational to the dog's historical context, and relational to the dog's understanding physics. So it's, it's relational to their field of vision in regards to the bridges. You know, you have to watch yesterday's articles towards the end um, in regards to the field of vision is what they see and how they perceive and the depth perception that happens. And then it comes to the logic processing is what they know as true and what they know as false right truth and false and what we're trying to get the our dog to do is by walking on a bridge that doesn't seem like it's secure to our dog is we're trying to get them to understand that this is a quote unquote false positive in the sense that it's false but it seems real so you can walk on it now walk on it right so and then the other one is a historical context because it's going to go back confront your own dog's uh familiarity with their experiences with bridges and with things that seem like bridges. And that's why you see some dogs not able to walk up a, sh a short ramp, like into a car or onto the bed, because they're like, oh, what is this, what is this? And they don't understand because the size of depth perception, they know, and that goes back to the, your, your dog's understanding of physics, right? Um, you know, perhaps I put dogs into this incredibly brilliant category, but I have to. If I don't have a, 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 an esteemed respect for dogs, then I wouldn't be able to move forward with the, the stuff that I'm uh, I, I'm working with them on that. Um, yeah, so there's that. I'm, I'm kind of walk, talking a little bit slower today too. I'm trying to pace the way I talk because I know it's that I talk really quickly and I think people are, are losing that as well. I want to get my message out and I realize that I need somebody who is now helping me with this marketing aspect of it. He's going to help me for a little bit and then, you know, let me fly on my own, so to speak. But it's he's got uh, great credentials pretty actually pretty cool credentials um he just loves dogs and i helped him with his dog and he's like let me just help you so that's pr pretty cool uh like i say it's always an american that has this um incredible generosity um it's really you know i, I you know I, i've had media coverage here in canada as well tv newspaper um but it just seems kind of like I don't have, you're not supposed to have permission to be successful or to be um, uh, popular or to be unique in Canada. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be down. I was born here. I really appreciate being a Canadian for sure, especially, you know, um, with the way things are going lately in the world. But it seems to me from my own experience in America and with Americans, um, there's such a, a desire to help other people and I know it doesn't seem like that in some people's perspective uh, but it's just this, this this part where there's such a strong desire to help and maybe it's a commercial thing like oh you know but I mean I have nothing to give this guy and I've had other people like Alan Shelton who's offered to help me as well and he's an incredible inspiration as well um, so it, it, it's I uh, uh, shared your info with someone here today that wanted more help understanding her Huskies. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it, Sammy. That's what I'm saying, right? Like, it's it just so nice. I mean, um, you know, and of course, I, like I talked earlier in, in the previous vlog, I, I had a, a shoe factory down in Van Nuys, California for about two and a half years. Um, it's a really interesting thing. I mean, yeah, I get that Americans have kind of a, somewhat standoffish attitude to people asking for help or, or foreigners or whatever it is in that sense. But I found that when I would talk to people with respect down there, they would suddenly go, yeah, let me help you. And the, the, the desires for people to make friends was really sincere. And I've, you know, I mean, I've, I'm friends um, with Zach Scow, right, from Marley's Mutts. As you've seen that in my first or second episode, right? So Mark, Zach is up there and executive trainer, uh, executive director of training for for Zach Scow and uh, has a positive change program. It's recognized by the uh, the California government. Uh, you know, he, he's gone and met the president. Um, he was on Tony Robbins and all that stuff. But Zach was just a really, is a really nice guy. Uh, I've met Sheena Gao, who's down in Los Angeles, and um, she's quite connected in the in the hollywood uh side of things and uh like on the on the crew side and uh, just a super generous person when i was down there a couple years ago to visit she was like hey if you need a place to stay i got a spare room and and all that stuff uh gretchen leaf from leaf wines 
uh, Leaf Winery um, in Santa Barbara, same thing. It's just a super generous part of this. Um, every time, I don't know, every time, I, yeah. It's kind of interesting, right? Americans have such a bad rap, but, uh, you know, they're, it's just like in Canada or any other country. There's always good and bad, right? But um, I'm just so thoroughly impressed that every single time I've had someone reach out to me to, to, to give me some advice or to help guide me uh, on this thing or that thing. They're like, yeah, we're, we'll do it. So um, anyhow, I just want to give a shout out to, to that. And I know there's a lot of turmoil going on in the United States right now. But I just want to remind people that, um, you know, Americans, uh, there's a lot of good Americans there. Uh, a majority of Americans are pretty awesome and amazing. Uh, but like in Canada, same thing, you know, we, we've got great people here, but we've also got some really jerky people. Um, a lot of the jerky people are, for me, are the trolls that go after me and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and it's kind of tough sometimes, right, when you get people attacking you just because they just don't like you or they are, they're, they're unfamiliar or they're jealous of what you do. It's like there's never – every time someone's ever asked me for to, to watch what I do to come to a session – uh, I've said, yeah, come out. You can come as many sessions as you want. Just come and watch me working with other. Absolutely, go ahead. So, want to want to keep it on that end. Um, okay, so I'm probably going to end this uh, relatively soon because I know I'm kind of uh, into 46 minutes. A bit of a ramble and all that. Um, except for the president, I know I have no comment. Um, that's why I said the president, Sammy, because uh, uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, we still got to respect what's going on. Hopefully things will shift uh, progressively forward and um, less people will be in pain, so to speak, right? Um, but, yeah, so I'll, I'm going to – I'm at 46 minutes, so this is great. So I'm going to, like I say, is transition to th probably, well, to a minimum three days a week. So it's probably going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So tomorrow I won't do one. Um, and then Wednesday I'll do one and then Friday and I might do a weekend one depending on it and um, uh, see the happy laughing faces and then um, I'm going to try to find time so I can go back to my old vlogs and create written articles about it so that way people don't want to spend two hours watching me ramble and they can get more to the point of what I'm talking about and I'll try to put some time references to it so that way people can kind of follow the article a bit better um, I'm sorry to follow the article so that they can follow the vlog itself. I, I need to try to, not need to try, but I need to uh, drive uh, traffic to more towards my, my social media aspects of it because it's the only way I'm ever going to get my message out. Um, yeah, so, so that's all. Um, let's see. And then uh, one of the things that I've really been dragging my feet on is how to prepare yourself for your dog's death and how to prepare your dog for their own death. And this one is a really tough one. Oh, thank you, Sammy. Uh, this one is a really tough one for me to get to because it, it's such a very strong, uh, painful uh, experience for me. And I'm sure anybody who's ever had a dog that died um, or who has a dog that is old and or is sick and, and you know, they are going to be dying uh, relatively in, in the near future. Uh, how difficult it is and uh, you know this is something I've been talking about for over um, for over a year now uh, with my uh, some really close friends of mine about what I want to do and help people understand that so I'm going to try to formalize that I think that's a super duper important thing um, I'm working on an article uh, that I haven't finished yet which is called um, uh, let me just see if I can even find this um, I'm going to try to bring it up if I can um, and I'm going to bring it up here as I scroll around here. What, what essentially is, and I did a bit of a teaser earlier uh, this in the summer in August, which was, does your dog dream about you? And that particular topic is, does your dog dream about you? Because we're always wondering, do our dogs have visions? Do they see us? Do they dream, etc.? And anybody who's seen our dog running in their sleep or moving or twitching their paws or moving their face or growling, we know our dogs are dreaming. And then the question is, okay, well, if they're dreaming, what are they dreaming about? And what is the context of their dreams? Are they having fully formed visions like we do or 
somewhat formed sometimes sometimes my dreams are just kind of right it's, it's like i don't I, you only kind of remember this thing but not the rest of the environment of the not, not the rest of the scene of the environment of the dream um you know uh, and how do we tell if the, our dog is having a logical dream a logically driven dream or emotionally driven dream and what i mean by that a logically driven dream which is a dream that's going to be situated on their experiences of that day most of my Danes died of cancer over 10 years of age. Wow, you must be a raw feeder, Mary. You must feed your Danes raw. Um, and so it's, it's a logical side of how they're processing the dream versus an emotional side where they have more of a fantastical reaction to their dreams and so forth like that. And so a, a lot of times when you see the dog, your dog dreaming and they're moving their feet and they're kind of like moving their feet in a certain pattern, like a, a set pattern, and their behaviors are in a set pattern, that's gonna be more of a reminiscent dream, All right? This is all my theory, so I could be 100% wrong, but I don't think so, um, just because I just know dogs so well. So see how the pattern that they're running, you're gonna see the fact that, or their movements are deliberate, even in their dream, that they're having an actual structured dream that's logical and that it's based on memory. A dog having an emotional dream is going to be a dog that's going to have a bit more of a frantic behavior in their mannerisms. They're going to sometimes vocalize things as well because vocalization is an emotional process, which is a fantastical reflection. Right? The dog having a logical dream, a memory dream, is not going to be barking or making any sounds because the dog is living, reliving the experience of their dream. The dog that is having an emotional dream is going to be more vocal because they're processing on a, a fantastical perspective. Their mind is making up that dream from a construct. It's also going to have some relative uh, point of reference from when your dog had an experience that day or historical reference. You see dogs that have had some severe trauma in their lives. Um, which are most of mine that, that come into my life that I adopt, they are usually quite um, subdued when they sleep. They don't, they don't do a lot of mannerisms. They don't usually have a lot of dreams. And when they do have dreams, it's a nightmare. And that goes back to some of the other things I talked about, which is, um, which is why I do the article. And i got to finish this article because I, I – um, which, which which the article is does your dog dream about you but it it also goes about how to address your dog because you know how sometimes you have a dysfunctional dog and they have a they seem to wake up one day and they're just in a bad mood right they're acting weird or whatever most often in my perspective in my opinion is it's going to be because your dog had a bad dream a nightmare and it's the same thing whenever you and i uh, you know, you know, if you came up, to, we were working together, and you came up to me, hey, you know, James, I had this really weird dream uh, last night, and you know, you're trying to tell me what do you think, right? Because you asked me what my opinion is, and maybe I can kind of help you decipher it with my opinion. Then you then you ask somebody else, and then you ask somebody else, what do you think of the dream? And then they give you all these things. We have these dream books that um, you know, a multi million dollar industry there. And when it comes to our dogs, where are we with our dogs, right? Dogs gonna have nightmares. They're gonna growl in their right. You've heard dogs growling in their dream. Sammy, even little Sammy, she'll growl in her dream every once in a while. It's a nightmare she's reacting to. She's not gonna express negative behavior during her sleep if she's having a happy dream. So. Um, Anyhow, that's the article I'm writing about, and maybe I'll do that, and then when I publish that, then I will come out with my vlog about the article itself, and then I'll publish it on my website, and then everyone can kind of go through it, and I'll go through point by point, and I want to create a bit more structured formality to it. Um, it and it just makes sense what the social media guy said. It just uh, makes brilliant sense. Um, you know, and I said to the guy, I said to him today, I said, I, I feel like I'm, you know, for me, when it comes to social media, I'm like the guy riding the tricycle. You know how I say about the, you know, Temple Grandin and, and Ian Dunbar and Karen Pryor and Rebecca Ledger, like, like a, like a kid riding a two wheel tricycle. <laughs> I said to this guy today, I said, I'm actually like a guy on a tricycle, but my tricycle's only got one wheel. 
So I'm worse off than the people I'm complaining about when it comes to social media. You know, I haven't gone on Instagram in a week now, um, but I'm learning of this, so I need to create structure. And once I get things a bit more formulated, I'll be talking a bit more precise, less rambling, shorter vlogs, um, and all that. And I think, you know, I'm going to work on my Do Dogs Dream About You uh, article and try to get that out this week. Uh, I was supposed to get out the 1st of September, actually, uh, 2nd of September. Um, but, you know, kind of like I said. But, um, yeah, so anyhow, I, I want to appreciate what everyone's doing, uh, tuning in. I know I'm a little bit boring sounding today in that sense of there's not a lot of excitement, not addressing a lot of issues and all stuff. Uh, hopefully I talk about the stitches and about going back to square one. Um, other parts of, of walking on the bridge, um, you know, I, I even look at the stuff about why dogs smell your face and other dogs' faces, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tracking aspect of it. In actual fact, how do dogs track, which is through a quantum process of, of their abstract memory and their placement of it, um, of, of the scent. And then, and then anyways, right, I, I better not go on that end. Um, bed Yeah, it signifies logical intelligence. Okay, so yeah, so, so that's about it. I'm gonna to try to finish off my when my dog dream about you. Um, I'm coming up to almost uh, an hour, uh, 56 minutes here. So I want to I want to make sure that um, I can close this off. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm now up to 458 subscribers. So I went up uh, uh, two subscribers since yesterday. So I want to thank my new subscribers. I never get to see their names, but I do know that they have like zero <laughs> subscribers. So that's kind of cool. Got contacted by somebody um, in, oh, I can't remember. It's a foreign country. I think it was Spain or something. And he said, I saw what you posted in one of the dog training groups that I didn't get kicked out of. And, uh, you know, it's odd and it's weird and different. He literally says it's very different and it doesn't make sense. But it, some of the stuff you talk about is really intriguing. And I hope you don't mind me joining a group. I'm like, absolutely, 100% absolutely welcome to to the group um welcome to my group if you have a question about your dogs that you want to have a behavioral aspect addressed free of charge join my reactive dog group right the link is in my rfrfbarkbark.com website under the tab free help for your dogs you come in there you 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 follow the way of posting it's got to be concise clear paragraphical history about your dogs and their behavior in, in areas so everyone can track it and makes it easier for other people to watch and listen and learn. And then um, that's it. It doesn't cost you anything. You just have to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter, IG, and um, Facebook. And if you don't have one or the other or whatever, then just as long as you're following me on YouTube, it's great. And then we go from there. We learn a whole bunch of things that are really important about your dog and actually oh you know before i even forget uh i didn't get a chance i got uh, 57 minutes so i'm gonna go over that anybody who remembers um prince the the pit bull um that um uh, was sarah was the one who had uh prince and all stuff uh, she was referred through uh, to me by her friend dina uh, dina is a is a, a really good makeup artist in toronto she works on movie sets and all that stuff i always see the stuff that she's She's like, wow, I'm like, holy cow, that person's not dead, really? Um, so it was kind of cool. So she, she had referred Sarah to me, and those of you in my reactive dog group, and if you go back a few episodes, you'll see where she was talking about her, her pit bull prince was uh, basically abused by friends that were supposed to be friends. Uh, so she says, hi, James, how are you? Thank you a million times for responding to my work friend, Sarah. Uh, I, don't know, I won't use her last name. She was to the point of tears with trying to help her pup Prince adjust to life in Toronto from Trinidad. She stopped by uh, my place last week and told me she had written you asking for help and you replied. And she's a different, totally, uh, she was a totally different person. Uh, uh, she was a different person. She learned so much from you and you've given her so much relief and, oh, and ways to really support and enjoy her dog Prince going forward. Right, so there's a difference, right, from when they come, people come and ask me for help to the time, because I give owners an understanding of their dog's psychological issue to the true core, not the aggressive, insecure, but psychological issues and why and what could have caused this, and we put the pieces together together. Um, so, you know, uh, really support and enjoy Prince going forward. 
I met Prince and he got my heart. And this is Prince is a dog who is not a nice dog, right? And nippy and biting his owners and all that stuff and reactive to uh, dogs and I think as well humans. Um, so she met him and he got her heart. So he was obviously a very happy dog. I told Sarah to reach out to you because we've spoken. You've helped countless dogs and you care. I appreciate the exchanges we have, James. And I thank you again from the bottom of my heart for what you did. Me and my friend Mika, they think, oh, her dog, Mika. Hi, hi, Dina. I don't know if you're even watching this, uh, right? But um, um, this is what makes me happy, right? And they had gone to different trainers themselves and didn't get any success. So for me, you know, it's, it was pro, it's pro bono. My fantasy is to be out there and just do it for free or, you know, whatever, right? I would love to be able to live and do this for free. I work in, I'm working with dogs in such a fast time frame. Um, like I say, it takes me under one minute to read a dog and I am complete with their information. Obviously my accuracy, you go to free help for your dog tab on my website and you'll see how I bred other people's dogs just through their photos and, and descriptions. Um, even, uh, like you said, um, um, regards to Riley is how just with, with faith, right? Uh, with Riley, I read her dog and just this way you do. And then we talked on the phone for a little bit as well. Um, okay. So I'm just over an hour. So I'm going to let everyone go. Um, Mary, I, I, yeah, maybe your email, they will not accept my email, but I can watch you too. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you have to set up a new account. I, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm really bad at, like I said, I'm like the guy on the tricycle with one wheel. I'm not even two wheels. At least I can kind of balance. You remember when we were kids and we were just kind of balance one way so we can kind of like, look at it. Evil Knievel. I'm actually on one wheel and, uh, you know, and it's not the front wheel either. I just have one of the back wheels. So I'm just like just spinning in the dirt with, with social media. Uh, you know, I hope as I progress and, and formalize things and commercialize it, right, I, I'm going to commercialize this. I do know that what I am doing um, is something that has potential to make a significant amount of money if that was the case uh, it's not my motivation to do so and as I said to this person uh, my dream is to use that if I make money to send it right back um, into helping dogs and create a, a larger foundation to do so so that my legacy lives forward uh, after I'm gone um, that's really something I want to do um, you know you'll see uh, and I need just another 50 bucks into the GoFundMe uh, uh, thing. I have uh, Patreon and GoFundMe. The links are in my uh, my description. Once I have $250 set up, then I'll put up the posts. Uh, you know, once uh, my donors, uh, followers, you know, if you have a few bucks to spare. Uh, once that gets 250 then I'm going to open up a post for anybody on a fixed income that needs dog training help for their dog. Doesn't matter how reactive, whatever it is. And then we may just end up doing a live feed off of that as well um or else we'll do the uh, a contiguous feed off of it and then then set up on um on a video uh, aspect of it but uh, whatever you all do with that to help other owners that's great and uh my desire is to teach everyone to do what i'm doing it's really relatively simple just don't overthink it go back to square one reset yourself so you reset your dog at the same time and those are the most beautiful things that I can ask is to find yourself with your dog right from square one again every time you need it. See you guys on Wednesday. It's going to be a bit of a, a, a fix addiction for me because I won't be doing this tomorrow. I, I kind of got used to really saying hi to everybody, you know, every day. Um, but I do know I have to be a bit more prudent with my time. And I have to kind of start to build up my audience. And I, I do know by showing it every single day, people are just like, well, he does it every single day. So if, um, if it turns out I'm not getting a great response every three, every other day, then I'm going to probably kick it down to maybe two days a week instead. All right. So I want to thank everyone again. And, uh, you know, for sure, please, um, you know, please be kind. Please share my stuff. Please let people know that, you know, they, they just – they're good. You're all good. You're all good people. Um, you know, just believe in the magic. Believe in the unicorn, right? Believe in the magic that we all believed in when we were kids. 
And then think of that and hold that in your hearts. Even if you don't need to share it with anybody else, just hold that into your heart. What kind of amazing, magical people we actually are. Just, you guys are just freaking awesome. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I really appreciate all the support that I receive from, from everyone. Uh, you know, this is kind of our struggle, right? Our, our collective struggle, as you all follow through with me, it's, it's a struggle. And who knows? Five years from now, I might have a TV show. If I have a TV show, you're all invited to, 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 to I don't know. I, well, who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, have the greatest night and keep the kindness in your heart for sure and share it with somebody. Okay, bye-bye.